Hi there, and a very warm welcome to this week's Quick Tip. And this week I'm really trying to honor the words as I'm still recovering and I don't want to put too much strain on myself. So this week, therefore, we are going to talk about a very small note that also can be very beneficial for your workflow if you know how to deal with it. And this is the texture to UVW note. Now, next week, I'm going to talk about the compact disc shader, probably. So I'm preparing the bigger tutorial for next week. So stay tuned. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I recommend you to follow me on social media, such as Twitter or X, what it's called nowadays, or Instagram, where I post my artworks and also some work in progress for some future tutorials. So you're always in the loop. All right, with that being said, let's get going and start with the tutorial. Welcome to Cinema 4D and Octane. So I thought rather than to jump into notes straight ahead, let's actually talk about the concept and the idea behind that first. And this is only one of the multiple applications of the texture to UVW node. So for me, it came to be with anisotropy once more. If you don't know about anisotropy, you can click on the upper right corner and this will take you to a video explaining how to do anisotropy inside of Octane and Cinema 4D. So what we have here is an object that represents radial anisotropy. So this comes to be when uh, the object is milled or brushed. And you can see that we have those circular scratches on there. I always try to bring in textures with my shaders to give them a little bit more detail and a little bit more variation and therefore make them more lifelike because reality is consistent of variation. Let's change the view to a down view here real quick. So you can see that the map I'm using is consistent of small circles and therefore getting the detail into this shader. Now, traditionally, what I've done to use this is I got a map that has the radial anisotropy on it. So let's open up this one here. And you can notice it's quite large. It's 10K to be able to provide the detail that I need to get these small grooves and scratches showing up accordingly. Because one of the factors in a texture for a milled object is that the detail here is extremely fine. And you don't want to ruin that with a low res texture. Now, when I did that, let's go to the other view here again. I thought about what can we do to use that in a different way to be more efficient, basically. So this is the texture or the UVs laid out commonly so we can map our circular map on there. And I thought about why not lay out the UVs in a circular pattern so we can use a straight linear map and therefore control the detail much more efficiently. So let me go ahead and plug in this texture here. We're already done our radial texture mapping. And you can see now the UVs are wrapped around the object and therefore they follow the circle. To make this more understandable, let's go into the nodes and exchange the UV map with a linear scratch map. So let's bring that in. Here we go. And let's open that in edit mode so you can see what we've done here. So this is just a linear map and it's rather low res, it's 2K by 2K. And now you can see we have basically created the same effect with the plus that we can dial in the detail. So if we go for a UV transform here, we can just up the detail by lowering the Y value and therefore squishing our scratches. So long explanation, I know, but for me, it's really worth it. And I hope it's for you too. And as I said before, this is just one application of the texture to UVW map. You can use it for quite some more really nice effects. So in the following, let's dive into the nodes. Welcome to node and therefore also UV land. So what we are trying to do here is assemble a shader that distorts our textures in a radial fashion. To do so, we are going to use UVs and what better way to do that in to understand what the UV coordinates actually are and look like. 
To learn a little bit more about UVs, let's go to the notes context, hit tab, and then hit UV, and then bring in the UV coordinate system here. So this is a UV coordinate system. So if we plug that into our diffuse, we can see some colors. Now let's also bring in our UV map by dragging that in, in here in the node context also and replacing that in the diffuse. And you can see, as you might have imagined, a perfectly aligned UV set. So what this tells us is somehow those colors are responsible for the UV mapping. Now let's dive a little bit more into the UV coordinates here by dissecting its individual channels. So let's go down here until we are going to the channel picker and let's bring that in in between here. We render and now you can see that we have picked the red channel or it was already picked and we can see it's just a gradient from left to right. Let's pick the green channel and we can see it's a gradient from bottom to top. Also, for completeness sake, let's pick the blue channel and we can see there's no gradient at all. Now, this might be called R, G and B, but basically it just phrases through what comes in here. And this is U, V, W. So red corresponds to U, green corresponds to V and B corresponds to W or Z. And since this is a two-dimensional texture, the B or Z or W coordinate also is only active when we are dealing with 3D textures such as noises. So what do we have established here? Basically that the coordinate system is represented by a gradient in the object. And by sort of manipulating that gradient, we can also manipulate the UV coordinate system. So let's go further. So next, the most important thing is to figure out a way how to bring in our UVs into the nodes context. Now, we already brought in the UV coordinates, which is pretty good, but we want to distort our texture here. So let's pipe in the texture and let's go into the texture context. If you watch older tutorials of mine, you already know where this is going. So we are going with a projection. While the most straightforward thought might be to use the UV transform, this only gives us access to the transform handles here, and those don't go further, so we need something more in depth. Let's go with the projection, and right now it's set to UVs, so we are getting the UV set from Cinema 4D in here. Now, when we go and roll that out, you can see there's a blather of different options including what I want to concentrate today on, the color to UVW. Now, if we select that, our material becomes white and we don't see any UVs anymore. And this is because the texture port that opened up is not populated right now. So what we can do is populate it with the original UVs here again. And then we are back to square one with our original UV set, but we now have control over that UV set. So to show you what I can do, for example, is to pipe in something in between here. For example, let's go with a multiply. Let's multiply something in here. And let's actually multiply a noise in here. So just for the ease of use. And you can see now we sort of distort our UVs. Now they are terrible distorted and we don't want to do that. But just to show you that now we have control over our UVs. So let's delete those two nodes again and think about what we want to do. By the way, if you are interested in my scenes and want to snoop around them and see what I did beside the tutorial, you have access to all of my tutorial scenes when you become a Patreon, no matter what tier. If you are interested in supporting my channel, the link is down in the description below. Small reminder, what we're actually going to do is get a center point and then rotate our texture around that. So let's think about that in a little bit more in depth way. So what we have right now is two gradients for both of those coordinates that go from left to right and from bottom to top. So what if we are finding a gradient that goes more in the way that we want it to be? 
So let's actually create a gradient generator here and try to figure out a way to get the gradient that we want. So let's pipe that into the diffuse and let's see. So right now the original gradient here is basically the same that the U channel from the UV coordinates we get in here. Now there's a gamma 2.2 here and if we get rid of that and then exchange it to the U channel, you can see there's actually no difference. But this is not what we want. We want a gradient that is more centered around the middle here. So let's go through some of the gradients. And actually this is one of those that really makes sense since it has its dark point in the middle and then falls off towards the rim. And let's go even further. And this is the other channel we need since it's providing us with the V coordinates that is providing the continuous fall off from one side to the other. So we already found our solution here somewhat and let's actually duplicate those gradients and make one of them radial and leave the second one as angular. All right, one thing I don't like about the radial map is that it ends in a circle within the UV space and then starts to repeat. But I don't want it to repeat, I want to end it with the white border here inside of the UV space. So what I'm going to do is go with a transform and I already know the value, it's around 1.45. So it ends just outside of the borders here, so we have a clean gradient. So the next step to tackle is to bring those channels together into one so we can pipe it into the texture slot here. So let's figure that out. And actually it's rather simple. Since we are dealing with a channel problem, we have the channel merger here. So what we are going to do is get the one gradient and merge it into the U coordinate, the other into the V coordinate. And since the W coordinate was empty or black, what we need to mimic that is just a float texture set to zero. Here we go. Okay, let's actually find out if everything worked by piping in the end of this into our texture to UVW coordinate system and then also the texture. And yes, it seems to have worked. Now there's some nice to know things, so let's go back to our gradients here. So first of all, if you are not satisfied with the orientation of our map here, what you can do is just switch those both gradients and this basically turns your map 90 degrees. Also, if your map is on its head right now and you want to change that, you can change that by inverting the gradient here. So let's do this for both since we always want to make sure that the orientation is correct so we can read in that manner and nothing is misaligned. So if we only would invert one of them, you can see that now it's backwards in one axis and we don't want to do that because it can lead to problems later on in the pipeline. Also, what you can do now is go back to the texture and enable a transform, then this lock the axis and now you can basically play around with the scale of those textures here and have them in the order you want them to. So let's give an example by bringing in the linear gradient that we had before or the linear scratch map, sorry, and then go outside of the camera and close up here. So if we want to bring in more detail, more scratches here. What we can do is just go to the S Y axis here and scale it down. So we have much more detail to work with. And the really cool thing is that it works with a very low resolution map. So it's very efficient in that way. So now that you know how UV maps work and that there are just two gradients in different channels basically, I think that unlocks a lot of options and your creativity. So if you've done something with that tutorial that you think is worth showing, just hit me up on social media. I can't wait to see what you have come up with. Otherwise, this concludes our video for this week. So thank you very much for watching. 
And a massive thank you for my Patreons for supporting me, this channel and therefore my work. A especially huge shout out to my super supporters and 50 Euro tier subscribers, Shields Augustinen, thank you so much, and Leon Studio TV, thank you. Also a huge thank you for my 15 Euro tier subscribers, George Luna, Chris Glemson, Lucas Pazan, Marty Kane, Part 1 of 2, Raiko, Render King aka Alessandro Bonchio, Scene CGI, Shamos Johnson, Unknown Unknown, and Yasin Rupp. Thank you all so very much for your support. If you are hearing this and are not currently a patron and are interested to support me, the link is down in the description below. As said in the beginning of this tutorial, probably next week there is the compact disc shader tutorial that I know a lot of you are going to look forward to. And this is definitely going to be a bit nerdy, but here we go, this is what this channel is about. Speaking of nerdy, if you're still with me, thank you very much. Let's post a brain emoticon in the comments if you hear that. Other than that, thank you very much for your support and happy UV bending. Bye.